for the Gymnastics Hall of Fame in the class of 2022 is Tatiana Gutsu. Tatiana lives in Detroit now. She came to America many years ago, but many of you know she's from Odessa, Ukraine. And she has shared with us the last couple of days of some unbelievable stories that her family has been hearing over there. So uh, it's especially poignant that Tatiana is acknowledged this year, not only because she's one of the winners of one of the most important Olympic medals of all time and the women's all around, but she's been a great contributor to gymnastics in many ways. Let's take a look at the video of Ukraine's Tatiana Gutsu. Known for her extremely difficult acrobatic skills, Tatiana Gutsu's spectacular gymnastics earned her a total of 12 major world medals, including the coveted 1992 Olympic gold medal in the individual all-around competition. Tatiana Gutsu was born on September 5, 1976, in the port city of Odessa, Ukraine, and she started gymnastics at the age of six. She became a member of the national team of the Soviet Union in 1988. Her first major international competition was the 1991 World Championships, where she won a team gold medal with the Soviet Union and finished fifth in the individual all-around, while winning silver medals in two individual apparatus finals the uneven bars, and the balance beam. Gutsu was always attempting the most daring and risky skills. By the time of the 1992 Olympics, Gutsu was considered a sure medal contender, but during the qualifying rounds, she finished fourth among the unified team members. At that time, only three gymnasts from any one team could qualify into the all-around final. With Gutsu's high degree of difficulty, her coaches thought she had a strong chance of winning a medal, so one of Gutsu's teammates, who had qualified ahead of her, was asked to step aside, allegedly because of an injury, so that Gutsu could compete in the all-around final. Tatiana made the most of this controversial decision by competing well enough to win the all-around gold medal over American Shannon Miller by a mere 12 one thousandths of a point. Gutsu would win four medals at the 1992 Olympics and retire shortly thereafter. After retiring from competitive gymnastics, Gutsu moved to the United States, where she is an owner and gymnastics coach at the Tatiana Gutsu Gymnastics Academy in Farmington Hills, Michigan. And today, she joins the International Gymnastics Hall of Fame in the class of 2022. Please welcome Tatiana Gutsu.
When Barb Connor contacted me and conveyed the board of directors' decision that I was inducted because of my gymnastics achievement and because I'm making a difference in communities around the world, I start crying. <laughs> this was very happy tears in my life. And to hear from legendary Nadia Kamenechi congratulating me, I wanted to jump and scream with excitement. <laughs> my trusted friends, my love of my life, my fiancé, Robert. <laughs> my son, Anthony, who is, by the way, my sunlight, my battery, and my universe. <laughs> but of course, I couldn't do it all alone. There's an absolutely amazing, encouraging, professional, and knowledgeable people right by my side. It's Libby, Mona, Natalia, Leah, my love Robert, and his family. We were and are united, working hard to achieve our goals and to make difference in kids' lives. Last time I was in Oklahoma was in 1992 on the John Hancock Olympian Tour. This is the hometown of the most decorated, strong, and talented world gymnast, Shanna Miller. I did have the opportunity to train in her gym named Dinamo, owned by Steve Luna and Peggy Wittig, world-knowing coaches of Shanna Miller. They welcomed me and my coach to their lovely home to stay with them and to train in their gyms for, for the few days. The experience was outstanding and it breathed in an amazing memory. I would like to dedicate this celebration of my accomplishment to the recognized international master of the sports of, gymna of gymnastics for the USSR and UKSR, Tamila Yedekimova and Viktor Diki. As well, I would like to thank USSR national team, Ukrainian national team coaches. Because of their coaching brilliance, I have been selected to receive this prestigious award in the sport of gymnastics. I am honored and I am very proud in this ceremony tonight to celebrate the recognition of our hard work. It is also an honor to be surrounded here with some of the world's best gymnasts whose achievements was highest of the high. I was born in the beautiful city of Odessa, Ukraine. My parents are Elena and Konstantin Butsu. I have three sisters, Irina, Olga, and Marina. My father no longer is with us, but spiritually he's always by my side. My mother, my son Anthony, my fiance Robert, and myself reside in Michigan. At the age of five, I was recruited by Danilo and Victor in the preschool kids center in Odessa. I was selected from many other children from my school to come to do gymnastics tryouts. In the test that I was assigned, I was always one or two repetitions ahead. <laughs> if we had to do five, I was doing seven. If we had to do 10, I was doing 13. I was doing my work until I was told to stop. I never came to my coach and said that I was done with my numbers of the repetition that I was assigned. I was drawn to challenges in winning. <laughs> we 
winning was the only acceptable outcome. <laughs> extraordinary coaches dedicated their lives to the development of this young girl from Odessa. Every day their knowledge, insight, and perspective gave me the tools I needed to navigate today's world. Every day I would go to gymnastics, to school, and then back to gymnastics. I was tired. I was exhausted, but I wanted more. Some days I was staying to 10 and 11 p.m. at night to complete my work. When I got better and stronger, my coaches would allow me to tag along with them to <coughs> Moscow or to Ukrainian training center. They were paying for me to go with them because my family could not afford to send me. They would coach other girls from my home team on the junior national team. Those girls were good and the experience was priceless. Everything that I was seeing, I was trying to repeat as it was a fun game. At the age of 10 and a half, I was accepted into the USSR and Ukrainian junior national team. We had to earn our place, nothing was easy. My coaches were preparing me for the national team with unique skills that I was learning and mastering. Gymnastics has given me so many opportunities. I have traveled to the most beautiful places in the world and performed in front of world leaders, including the Queen of England. I have been introduced to the most amazing people, performed alongside of the world best athletes, and given the opportunity to represent my independent country of Ukraine. It is an honor to be first female athlete in the history of Olympic Games, to bring an Olympic gold medal, raise the Ukrainian flag, and proudly hear the anthem of Ukraine. I have been very fortunate and blessed to have been given a chance. I would like to talk about what it means to have been given a chance. I believe that everyone who has the will and the ambition should have the right to be given a chance. Far too often, society segregates individuals and denies them their chance. This could be because of their ethnic background, their political bias, their social or economic status, party or races. I left Ukraine at the age of 17. The collapse of USSR, the devaluation of the rubles, and the suppression of its citizens forced a change. I came to the United States without any money. I couldn't speak a word of English. I was a very, it was a very scary and challenging time for me. But the prospect of the future in the United States was exciting. I was very fortunate that the United States gave me a chance. Chance that I took very seriously. A small thread of hope that I held onto and never let go. This journey took me from a memorable evening dining with my family when I expressed to my family that I was moving to the United States. over 200 young athletes and dedicated class of for autistic and impaired children. I am certified special Olympic coach. 
I am writing the Small Business and Amway Olympian Global Choice, and I'm the founder of my charitable organization, World Humanitarian Organization, dedicated to helping the less fortunate and suffering people of the world. Gymnastics has been the foundation for a life that I love. I was very blessed to have loving parents that understood the value of dedication to their children. It was this selfless desire that fulfilled my dreams that made this journey possible. Gymnastics given me the opportunity to teach and mentor the next generation of athletes. My inspiration comes from the relentless dedication of the coaches that taught me. We need to teach and inspire, show love, patience, and compassion. We need to teach humility, sportsmanship, and integrity. Giving these tools will give children what they need to navigate their world today and hopefully make the changes that they will make the world a better place. Children are looking for guidance. Our world is a difficult place. As a coach, as a parent, it is our responsibility to teach and inspire, to motivate and provide direction. The future of gymnastics, the future of our society depends on this. Without, without direction, children in today's society are aimlessly navigating without a purpose. Having a purpose, a goal, an achievement inspire children to care. Children who care evolves into adults that have the framework within themselves to show compassion, understanding, and love. The phrase, love thy neighbor as thyself, goes back to a biblical time. Without the foundation at the young age, there is a missing link to the compassion society needs to survive. This is the evidence and the action taken in the world today. Time after time, we see the impact of humanity, humanity from senseless dictators who lack compassion. Being from Ukraine, I can only watch in horror at the devastation that has taken. In my homeland, my sisters, their husbands, my aunts and my uncles, my nieces and my nephews, my cousins, my goddaughters, all have been severely impacted by this senseless war. Humanity can never forget the atrocities of the past. To forget our history is to repeat it. We must hope individuals are accountable. of the world leaders. Humanity can only fall back to the one common denominator that exists in all, love. Without love, you're left with hate. Without love, you lose compassion, kindness, humility, and understanding. Without love, dictators can suppress control and instill fear into helpless people without the fear of retribution. Silence in the face of evil is evil. We must learn from our past and to put an end to these atrocities that have devastated so many. We must love each other and settle our differences with constructive dialogues. 
we need to value the right for individuals to live a peaceful existence. We need to help those that are less fortunate and feel a warmth in our heart when they succeed. Love is contagious. Let's do our part. Let's choose love. As I close on this wonderful evening, I want to share with you this last thought. As I work with the youth of today that are so brilliant and dedicated, I am surrounded by our future and I see hope, I see promise. We need to believe in good of this world. So often we focus on the bad. We need to believe that society will do what's right. We need to believe that good will conquer evil. We need, we have to make this world a peaceful place. Our children deserve nothing less. We must take a stand for the peace that all of humanity deserves. Thank you. God bless you and God bless the people of Ukraine and the world. today in orchids but um, he asked me to purchase this for you bouquet and he made this um, by himself he had to take it out by pieces to actually bring it to Oklahoma and oh. and he made this for you oh. so. 